Hey everybody, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean and reseal your stamp concrete. So as you can see here, we've got a stamp concrete patio. Take a look at this. How do you know if your concrete needs to be resealed? Well, as you can see, this is really faded. It's got some, uh, it kind of looks a little whitish on top. That whitish is the sealer that's degrading, it's fading, it's just old. And it needs to be touched up and it needs to be resealed. So it doesn't matter if your stamp concrete is a year old, if it's five years old or ten years old. You can clean it and reseal it and make it look just like new again. But the first part of doing that is got to get it clean. So how are we going to clean this today? I'll show you. What we're going to do is we're going to pressure wash this. But we're not going to use just a single fine tip on the pressure washer. We've got a special attachment we use to clean the concrete with. I'm going to get that attachment and show you right here. So this is called a surface cleaner, okay? You, this, this will plug right into your wand, right here. I'll have a, a link for this on the website or down in the description of the video so you can check it out and get one of these. But what this does is it spins as it, as it cleans and it won't leave a line in the concrete. If you just use a regular tip and you put it too close to the concrete, you're going to make lines in your concrete and they'll show up after you seal it. So this is the best tool to use to clean your stamp concrete with and get it ready to reseal. Alright, we're gonna let's get to it. All you gotta do to attach your surface cleaner to your wand is use your quick connect tip here on your on your tip. Plug it right in there, press it down, and now you're connected and ready to go. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna it's gonna remove and clean any of the old sealer that's flaking off any of the dirt and grime that's on the concrete it's going to remove that from the concrete and then after we're done using this then we can take the surface cleaner off and put a fan tip on the end and just kind of rinse all the dirt away that this is removed
Okay, so we've got the surface all cleaned. Uh, the surface cleaner does a bunch of things for us. Number one, it removes any loose sealer. The white sealer, the faded sealer that you see on there, it takes most of it right off. Not all of it's going to come off, and that's okay. Some of the stuff that's bonded on there really good is going to get re-emulsified when we apply the new sealer. But it also removes any mold and mildew and obviously the dirt that's stuck on the concrete. So once you use the surface cleaner, the next thing you've got to do is, is uh, rinse the residue off of the concrete to get it good and clean. Now, the pressure washer you need, you're going to need between a 2500 and a 3500 PSI pressure washer. Uh, for most of you, you probably already have one, but for those that don't, I'll have a recommended one in, on the web page and down in the description of the video. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take off the surface cleaner, we're going to rinse off the residue, and then we're going to let this thing dry for 24 hours before we can seal it. Okay, so you've got it all surface cleaned, you've got it all rinsed down, that's going to be day one. You're going to have to let this thing dry out for 24 hours before you put the sealer on. So if you can, I'd try to pick two days where it's going to be really nice and dry both days. If it does happen to rain in between the washing and the sealing, you're going to want to give it another 24 hours to let it dry out. The sealer doesn't, it's not compatible with water, so the concrete has to be dry in order for the sealer to really work right. If, if you try to seal over it when it's wet, the sealer is just going to turn white on you again. So let it dry out and you'll be just fine. Hi right, everybody. So it's been 24 hours now since you cleaned your stamped concrete. The concrete's nice and dry. It's a nice day out. It's 70 degrees and sunny. You're going to want to reseal it on a nice day. It's not going to want to be too hot and it's not going to want to be too cold. Um, ideally 60 70 degrees is is the ideal temperatures if it's too hot if it's in the 80s or 90s then you're going to want to wait until late in the afternoon when the sun's going down and the temperatures are cooling off before you spray on the sealer if it's too cold then the sealer just won't dry properly and you're going to want to wait for it to warm up 
All right, so the first thing we're going to do before we reseal is we're just going to clean off the stamp concrete, make sure there's no dust or debris on it from, from overnight. And there's a few ways you can do that. The way I do it is with a leaf blower. I'll just leaf blow this and blow any dust off. You can use a broom if you want to and just broom it off. You could vacuum it if you want to, but I find the easiest way is just to use a leaf blower. All right, so once you've got your stamp concrete all clean and blown off, you're getting ready to seal it, your stamp concrete should look a little bit like this here, like mine does. Now, as you can see, if you look at this, you can see some of the old sealer residue. It has a little bit of whitish look to it. It's faded. Some of it has come right off with the pressure washing, and some of it hasn't. But it's not too thick. It's just a very light coating of residue left on there of old sealer. Now that's going to be perfectly fine for sealing. The, the new sealer is going to completely make that go away and make it look like brand new. So this is somewhat similar to what your stamp concrete should look like before you reseal it. Now let's just take a walk down here and you can see some of it, some of it shows up it's a little thicker than others. Some of it came right off with the pressure washing and then some of it has just worn off with use. This stamp concrete here hasn't been resealed for three years, so this is the third year um, it's been with just this sealer here, and this is what it looks like. Typically, a stamp concrete sealer will last two to three years under normal conditions. Um, if there's a lot of foot traffic on it, maybe you've got to reseal it every year, but typically it's two to three years, and you can reseal it and make it look like brand new again. As you can see, as we're walking down here, you can see where some of it has come off, and then there's some of it that just has the residue left on there. Now, what do you do if it's what do you do if it's too thick? Like if it if it's if it looks really thick and white, how can you remedy that? Well, what I would suggest to do first is take some xylene. Let's go over here. I got I got a can of xylene. I'll show you. We'll get some xylene. Right here, this is xylene. This is a this is like a thinner. It thins sealers. It thins epoxies. And I would take the xylene, and I would just dump a little bit on the, the really thick white sealer, like that. Let it sit for a few seconds, okay, and wipe it in. and see what it looks like after you put the xylene on it. Now the xylene is going to re-emulsify that old sealer and sometimes it'll make it look like brand new again and you won't have to strip the old sealer. But if you put the xylene on it, wipe it around a little bit and then it doesn't change the look after about 15 or 20 minutes, then you may have to strip that, that old sealer and that'll be a whole nother video for that. Alright guys, so what's the best sealer to use to reseal your stamp concrete? Well, my favorite and the one I like to use is Foundation Armor's AR350, which is their satin kind of matte look type of sealer. It does darken the concrete, but it doesn't leave a high sheen or a high gloss. If you like the high sheen and high gloss, then they have an AR500 you can use. That works really good also. So. I mean, what do I like about Foundation Armor? Well, number one, they have a really high quality sealer. They got really good customer service, so if you have a question and you call them up, they actually pick up the phone and answer it. And then it's really easy to get. You can get it right on Amazon and have it delivered right to your house, or you could buy it right off their website if you want, and they'll ship it right to you. Um, I'll have a link down in the description for it, too, if you want to get it there. But you can call them up and buy it on over the phone, you can buy it online. So what's so good about this here? What do I like about it? Well, if we look on here, this is a non-yellowing, it's UV resistant and it's breathable. So what does that mean? Well, a, a breathable sealer means 
if there is moisture present under your stamped concrete, like in the ground below, if there's moisture coming up through your concrete, this sealer is going to allow that concrete to still breathe and it won't blister and peel off your sealer. Uh, UV resistant means the sun does degrade concrete sealers that are applied outside. So this is resistant to that. It tends to last longer than other acrylic sealers. This is a solvent based sealer, which means it, it has a solvent in it that makes it easier to apply. And if you're going to apply a, a solvent based sealer, you want to make sure there was a solvent based sealer that was used previously on your concrete. And the way to do that is what we do is, again, we'll take a little bit of xylene like this to figure out if this is solvent or not. We'll dump a little xylene on there and we'll just let that sit for a few seconds. Okay. We can rub that around a little bit, let it sit. And the way you tell if there's a solvent based sealer on here is if in a minute or so that feels tacky, it's going to re emulsify the old sealer then you know you have a solvent based sealer on here and you're okay to use another solvent based sealer over it. What if it's not a solvent based sealer? What if it doesn't get tacky? What if it just gums up? Then there's a pretty good chance you have a, a water based sealer on there and that probably means you're going to have to strip off the water based sealer before you apply a new sealer to it. Now most, most contractors like myself when we do stamp concrete we do use solvent based sealers and the reason we use them is they enhance the look of the color in the stamp concrete a lot better and they tend to hold up better outside so there's a pretty good chance that your stamp concrete has a solvent based sealer on it. Now another reason I like this is uh, it really enhances the color it doesn't dull or fade the surface it resists flaking and peeling just like it says on the can here and it also helps resist uh, freeze and thaw cycles. If you live in, a, in an area where you get pretty harsh winters, it resists salt damage. So if you've got you to spread salt on your stamp concrete, which I don't really recommend, but if you have to, then this sealer is going to help protect your stamp concrete against that also. So foundation armor sealer is very good for use on brand new stamp concrete as well as older stamp concrete like this one. So if, if I was going to pour a brand new stamp concrete for a customer, this is what I would use also, either this one or the Wet Look Sealer, the AR500. Now how long does it take for this sealer to dry? Well because it has a solvent base to it, it's only going to take maybe 20 or 30 minutes to dry in between coats on a regular 70 degree day, you know, especially if it's in the sun at all. Now does, does all stamp concrete need to be sealed? Well, yeah, all concrete needs to be sealed, especially stamp concrete. If you want to protect your investment and keep it looking great for years, then you need to seal it. And like I said before, Foundation Armor is my go-to sealer for sealing all stamp concrete, whether it's new or used. And like I said, it's going to take about 20 or 30 minutes for the sealer to dry after you apply it. You're going to want to put two coats on, two really thin coats. The first coat we're going to apply at about 400 square feet a gallon. And that, that's really, really thin. And we don't want thinner the better. So what we say in the, in the sealer world is thin to win. So we'll put it on really thin for the first coat. That's going to dry really fast. We're going to come right back over it with a second coat at about 300 square feet a gallon, just a little bit thicker. So two coats of sealer and your concrete's going to be looking like brand new again. You're not going to want to seal this, guys, in the, in, the, in the heat of the day, especially if it's out in the sun. You're going to want to wait until it's cooler. You're going to want to wait until it's, the sun's going down and your concrete's cooling off. What do you do if after you seal your stamped concrete and you get some blisters forming? First of all, why do blisters form? Well, the main reason blisters form is because your stamped concrete is too hot when you spray it on and the sealer is drying too fast and that solvent doesn't have time to evaporate and the acrylic sealer just kind of seals itself over so and then you get these little blisters that form little bubbles and how do you remedy that well the best way to remedy that or fix that is just just let it dry the next day come back and take a stiff bristle broom and just broom over those blisters or bubbles and break them apart and, and blow off any of the remnants 
and then just spray on another light coat of sealer and they'll go away as long as it's cool out when you do it. Now what's the best sprayer to use? You have to use a sprayer with a solvent based sealer that has, is made for solvents. So this one here is a stainless steel sprayer. All the seals, all the rubber seals and gaskets in it are made to handle the solvents that are in these sealers and they won't deteriorate when you start spraying through it. If you just use a, a cheap pump up sprayer like this, the solvent in there is going to eat the hose, it's going to eat the tip and there's a good chance that the, the sprayer hose could just form a hole and explode on you. So you're going to want to make sure you use a nice high quality sprayer and they are expensive, I'll grant you that, but you'll be able to use them over and over and over again for years. And what we do is after we get done spraying the sealer, we'll take some of that same xylene I showed you, we'll dump in about an inch of xylene in that and just shake it around and then we'll spray that xylene out and it cleans the sprayer right out. And then you're good for either next year or anything else you want to spray through that. Alright, so what's the best way to apply the sealer when we, when we start applying it. The first thing I like to do is have somebody with a pump up sprayer and they're going to be spraying the sealer on. You'll see us do that in a second. And then right behind the person spraying, I like to have somebody back rolling with an 18 inch 3 8 snap roller. And what that does is it really helps mix the old sealer with the new sealer. So you're going to be pushing the sealer right, right uh, into each other and creating a really good bond. The, the new sealer is going to help re-emulsify the old sealer and then back rolling that's going to really help make them bond together better. So that's how we're going to do the first coat. And then the second coat you put on, you can just have one person just spraying on the light coat and you're going to be fine with that. Now is resealing your stamp concrete something you want to try to tackle yourself? Well I think after reading my web page and watching this video, I think yes, it's something you can do yourself. If, especially if you're a little bit handy or you're kind of a DIYer, this is definitely something you can do on your own. If you're not, then maybe you're just better off hiring somebody. How much money are you going to save by doing it yourself? Well, as a contractor with employees in a business, you know, if, if someone hires me to come do this, I have to clean it one day, I have to come back the next day to reseal it. It's probably going to, I'm probably going to charge you a minimum of, you know, at least $500 a minimum if it's something really small. If it's something this size, this is about 12 by 60 right here, so this is about 700 square feet. I'm going to have to get at least a couple bucks a square foot to come do this for you to make it worth my while and you know make a little profit on it. So how much is this actually going to cost you to do? Well a can of sealer is about 250 bucks for, the, for a five gallon can and that's going to be enough to do both coats on this. And then a sprayer, a really good sprayer like this is about a little over a hundred bucks. So you're going to want, you're going to need the, the sealer, you're going to need a sprayer, you're going to need a, a 18 inch roller which is, you know, 15, 20 bucks for that. So you'll be able to save yourself a ton of money by doing this yourself if, it's, if you think it's something you can handle and after watching this video you'll be able to determine that. Alright, so I just want to show you how to put the sealer in the sprayer. This is really easy. First thing we do is we just unscrew the top, okay, set that down, cover off the sealer. Going to want to make sure the whole when you're first dumping it out of the can, make sure the hole is on top, not bottom. And again, depending on how, how large your stamped concrete is will depend on how much seal you put in. I'm going to put in about two gallons for this. Like I said, 400 square feet a gallon for your first coat, so it's going to go on really thin. Get your two gallons in there, tighten the top back on, screw it on, and then 
you just pump up the sprayer. You're going to have to pump it probably 30 or 40 times to get enough pressure in there. Alright, so after you have your sealer in the can and it's all pumped up and ready to go, you're just going to want to purge a little bit out to make sure it's coming out of the tip all right. You want a nice, nice even fan on the tip, like that. It's kind of spraying a mist. That's exactly what you're looking for. Just spray it on and back roll it like this. That already looks like brand new again. Some of that's going to dry up and sink into the concrete, so it'll be a little faded and dull on this first coat. But after the second coat, it's going to look beautiful. It's going to look just like brand new again. Alright, I just want to show you real quick the difference between what it looks like after you put the first coat on and what it looks like before you sprayed the first coat. So, as you can see, this is just the first coat so far. We've sprayed that and back rolled it and it already looks, it's got a really nice sheen to it. It looks, it looks like brand new stamp concrete again. And that's what yours is going to look like. And I just wanted to show you that real quick. As you move forward and finish this off, your stamp concrete is going to look like brand new again. You feel like the sprayer is losing a little pressure, just give it a few more pumps. And you'll be good to go again.
All right, so we got the first coat on. How long do you wait before you put the second coat on? Well, it's all going to depend on the temperature. You're going to want to wait about an hour to four hours, depending on the temperature outside. But the way you check it is, you know, just rub your hand over it. And if it's not tacky, if it's not sticky, if it feels real dry, then that tells you it's time to reseal it again. So remember, your second coat, we're just going to spray on. No back rolling with the second coat. First coat we put on at about 400 square feet a gallon. This one we can go just a little thicker if you want. You can go 300. But if it looks really good after the first coat, then you can still go on at 400 square feet a gallon. Put it on really thin. The thinner the better. You just want to make it look nice. If you get this stuff on too thick or any acrylic sealer on too thick, that's when you're going to start running into problems. So thin to win. After we put the second coat on, how long do you wait before you start having your normal foot traffic? Well, Foundation Armor recommends 24 hours to wait before normal foot traffic. Now again, this second coat is going to dry really fast, so if you had to get on it in 4 or 5 hours, you could walk on it. It'll be dry to walk on, but for the regular traffic to open it back up to regular traffic, you know, give it a day. That way it'll have plenty of time to cure and seal and get hard. Alright, so time for the second coat. Okay, if you got any left in the can, you got any left in the can when you're done, just spray it right back into the, the five gallon bucket and save it for next year. Now if you're worried about your stamped concrete being slippery after you put the second coat of sealer on, you can add, Foundation Armor has this non-slip additive, you can add right to the sealer. It's a really fine powder that will, that will help make it not slippery. You can add that you can add a little bit right into the sprayer if you want and try spraying it out and it usually sprays out pretty good but if it doesn't spray out then you can just put the sealer in a, in a paint roller pan and just roll the sealer on that way 
you just have to make sure you keep mixing it up every every minute or two to make sure it's dispersed in the sealer all right but if you're worried about your stamp sealer being slippery then just add this non-slip additive to it all right guys so when you're done sealing when you're done with the sprayer you got to clean the sprayer out i'm going to show you how i do that right now that way when you come to use it the next time it'll be good and clean the tip won't be clogged from the sealer you got to get all the the remnants of the sealer out of the sprayer and out of the wand so you can use it again next time. I'm going to show you right now. Take a little bit of xylene. Dump it right in the sprayer. Probably about, I got probably about an inch in the bottom of that sprayer. Put your top back on. Tighten it up. Pump it up. Okay, pick up your sprayer. Just kind of move that, move that xylene around inside it. And then you're going to want to spray that xylene out. You can spray it out into a separate container if you want, like a metal container, or you can spray it right back into the sealer if you want, because the solvent in the sealer is basically xylene. So that's what I do. I just spray that little bit of xylene right back into the sealer can. Spray it all right back in there and that'll clean out your sprayer, it'll clean out the wand, it'll clean out the tip. That's it guys, that's how you clean the sprayer out.